I found out recently there's a trend, primarily in the US, to do $100 NES challenge videos. These being the NES games you should buy if you've got 100 freedom units and presumably some way to run NES carts. Speaking from the British side, there's two obvious problems with this. One, that it's measured in gun tokens. And two, that it is not about history's greatest console. So let's fix these. Hi British people, this is the £100 Master System Challenge. £100 to buy yourself a library of Master System games in the UK as of January 2022. Our metric for prices will be the library of British used stuff retailer CEX, as they're a reasonable static national source. They charge £2 an item for postage, and I've included that in prices which are correct as of the 14th of January 2023. First, I assume you have a Master System. If you're buying one, try to get a Master System 1. It has much better video output and can run games off both cartridge and card. Some early SMS ones cannot run the three games published by Codemasters, but they are all super expensive anyway. I would also recommend a Mega Drive controller if you can. It works with virtually every game and is a much nicer experience. To start you off, Every Master System comes with a built-in game. On very early ones, it's just this little snail maze. But your later SMS one might have Hang On and Safari Hunt, Alex Kidd, or very rarely, Missile Defense 3D. Your SMS 2 may have Alex Kidd or Sonic 1. Spoiler alert, Sonic 1 is in this list. If you have it built in, please substitute the excellent conversion of Hang On. You'll still be in budget. The Master System is still accessible in the UK. Your machine, even an SMS1 with power and video cables, can be had for under 50 notes on a good day. And we've got 11 games to start your collection here, all of which will be boxed. But the presence of a manual is in the hands of the CEX gods. So what did I put in my virtual basket? First up, the obvious gimme, Sonic the Hedgehog for a tenner. The 8-bit version of this is an entirely different game to the famous Mega Drive pack-in, and there are plenty of people that will tell you it's probably better. I'm not going to litigate that in this video, but Sega's risk to hand the port to a team that had never produced a video game paid off in spades. That studio is Ancient, founded by Sega music legend Yuzo Koshiro, and his reworks of the original Nakamura tracks are one of the highlights of this release. If you've not played 8-bit Sonic, then this should be on your list. If you have, it probably already is. That said, it's not my favourite Sonic game on the system. Sonic Chaos is the third entry in the series and an 8-bit exclusive. It's my personal favourite Sonic game on any format, but it'll cost you 20 quid on its own. So if you're feeling flush, then absolutely put it on the shopping list. But you'll be very happy with the original in the meantime. You can only play both these games on a Master System and Game Gear, and they're better here. The Master System insiders know what's coming, but the other obvious name to those in the know is still the gaming bargain of the century. A boxed Enduro Racer will cost you £8 delivered. Enduro Racer is a semi-loved Sega coin-op and can basically be considered hang on with an attitude problem. I'm not really a fan of it in the arcade or any of the attempts to straight convert it to various systems. For Master System though, Sega created a spiritual sibling in the form of an isometric excite bike of a thing. The gameplay is simple, really you're just going left and right and timing your wheelies on the jump to keep the speed up, but it's brilliant. The game in this form is also a Master System exclusive, not even appearing on the handheld. One thing to note though, the Euro and US release was cut down from the Japanese original as they used a smaller cart. If you like Enduro Racer, you will end up looking into the cost to import and run the original version, which has twice as many stages. Another Master System exclusive, and one very few people have heard of. Battle Outrun is the most unique game in the series. Rather than being the classic multi-route sun-filled racing game, Battle Outrun is actually a knockoff of Chase HQ, and its obscure nature makes it cheaper than either Chase HQ game on the system, both of which it's better than. 
a little more forgiving than those games too, probably thanks to not having an arcade parent. Battle Outrun even has a fairly comprehensive upgrade system to upgrade what is very clearly a Ferrari F40. It's a lovely example of an 8-bit driving game, and for £12 delivered it's a great little conversation piece too, because everyone loves discovering an Outrun game they never knew existed. I've suggested the classic Super Monaco Grand Prix as a collection starting essential before, but weirdly CEX don't list that. What you can get instead though is its Ayrton Senna endorsed sequel, and it's the cheapest game in the list. If you walk into the right CEX and accept cartridge only, it can be yours for as little as two English pounds. Six quid though will get you a boxed copy delivered to your door. Produced with the assistance of Ayrton Senna in that he definitely knew it was happening, Super Monaco 2 is a lovely little F1 racer with all the important things, even Suzuka. Its gimmick is a manual gears control method that dispenses with braking and accelerating entirely and you just change up and down through the six gears. Weirdly, this means the beginner option in this game is manual gears, and it'll be a good first driving game for a child as you just steer and pick a gear for the corner. They can even graduate to real driving as there's also an automatic gears option that does let you accelerate and brake. Weirdly, despite a free practice option, so you can drive every circuit, there's no single race option. So to actually get your racing on, you'll need to do the full world championship. Still, it can't be passed up for the price, but next time you have money for a racing game, consider Domark's excellent official game from late in the system's life. Another gimme for the SMS aficionado this, and another one where the 16 and 8 bit versions are very different games. Like Sonic, a reasonable contingent will tell you this is better than the Mega Drive one. And again, I'm not going to touch that debate with a barge pole here. What Castle of Illusion on the old Master Saster certainly is though, is a very entertaining and brilliantly imaginative platform romp. The kind of game that has more ideas in its first level than some games manage during its entire run. The main game is deep and lengthy and you can waste a lot of time exploring the levels. The whole thing has a huge dose of the Disney charm and the Master System's graphical capabilities are entirely suited to the task. Plus, if you have little ones or just want to say you completed a game, there's a practice difficulty that, trust me, you'll be able to complete, possibly during the time it takes your tea to brew. We don't want to overload with platform games, especially just Disney ones, but I've chosen to include one more from later in the machine's life. As most know, the Master System's commercial life in Europe was years longer than in the US and Japan, so those folks never saw some of the later titles that really pushed the machine along. There were several options for this slot, but we'll go with this, The Lion King. There's two reasons to have this game, but as a collection piece the first reason is that this is a game running perfectly on a machine that shares a processor with the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. The Amiga version requires a 32-bit A1200. It does not run on the 16-bit Amigas, and yet here in 8-bit land it's perfectly happy. History's Greatest Console scores another victory, assisted by the good people at Cyrox. The other is that it's a damn good platformer with a decent gimmick of Simba's roar being used to disable some enemies be it as Baby Simba or Adult Simba. Where Sonic and Castle of Illusion both attract criticism for being too easy, this is notoriously rock hard, so would be a perfect choice for you once you master the other two. Eight pounds to you, madam. Incidentally, if you don't fancy this specifically, Jungle Book can be had for a quid less, and you might also consider the distinct version of Aladdin by SMS Wizard Sims, which is not a conversion of either the famous Mega Drive or SNES games although that will cost you £14. Ok, platformers be damned. Time to go for a game where I will absolutely say the Master System version is better than the one on its bigger brother. G-Lock. If you know your games, you might consider G-Lock looks a lot like Afterburner, and it is. Some consider it a spiritual sequel. The arcade machine had a gimmick where the cabinet could rotate the player through a full 360 degrees and leave them hanging upside down if they liked. 
The SMS version is again converted, much like Enduro Racer, as an 8-bit game rather than a perfect replica, and it benefits from this to become a stonking dogfight sim that fair flies along even on this hardware. I've said it's better than the Mega Drive version, but it's also better and cheaper than Afterburner. It's the connoisseur's choice. Properly unique this, both as a game and to the system itself. Basketball Nightmare is a game about a high school basketball league and I know already your hand is drifting towards the next chapter button like it's the remains of a half-eaten packet of crisps. Stick with me though, because through the course of a relatively simple game of Basketball Nightmare you're going to be playing teams consisting of wolfmen, turtles, vampires, witches, and I'll give you one guess. Wrong. Tengus. Literally Heavenly Dog. It's a fever dream of a game that's already a delight just based on this information. None of this would matter if it were a bad game though, but while simple, Basketball Nightmare plays a good match with its two button control system. It's got passing, jumping and a decent shooting mechanic, and it's more than possible to steal the ball. The dunk animations are absolutely stunning for an early game on this system too, although of course when a game is going to feature 20 plus scores then they do get a touch repetitive. It will also introduce you to another signature characteristic of the system. The Spectrum has its colour clash, the C64 has its brown, the CPC has chinny vision, and the Master System has sprite tearing. It takes an incredibly skilled dev to avoid it when things get busy and you'll see a lot of it during the busier sections of Basketball Nightmare. It doesn't matter though, this is a charming, engaging and simple sports game that I'd argue achieved a lot of what NBA Jam tried to, but three years earlier. Another one you can only own here, and for £8 you should own. One final honest to goodness arcade conversion, and it's a pretty straight one. Marble Madness is a very simple game where you guide a ball through multiple increasingly complex levels to the goal under increasingly tight time limits. Theoretically, if you were perfect at the game you could complete it in 5 minutes, but you are not and you can't. Equally, like any good arcade game, Marble Madness is a game you can have a quick go on and be absolutely fine, even if that quick go evolves instantly into 2 hours of yelling at a narrow platform or slime based enemy. You can play this on other formats as well, twice on Mega Drive in fact, but this is as good as any of them and this is not held back technically by the machine. It's a good cartridge to have in your collection for a tenor delivered and fills out this collection nicely. Speaking of filling out the collection, here's an oddball, and probably the only game here that's really a tribute to the Master System's Japanese origins. I've been aware of this forever, but was properly prompted to play it recently by 8-Bit Boy's weekly Master System Challenge, which you should all really get involved with one of these days. Shanghai is a variant of Japanese tile game Mahjong. It's really very simple. You remove pairs of matching tiles two at a time from the tower-shaped stack. The only downside here is you can only remove tiles that can be slid out either right or left without being blocked in. What results is a game that is absolutely as addictive as, but more fun than classics like Solitaire. This Activision derived version was released on everything in the late 80s, but this Sega port is one that endures, and is of course very accessible running on a console with just a controller. It was my obsession for most of the week of this challenge, and even though that's moved on, it's still the cartridge currently in the analogue Mega SG I use to play most of my Master System games. It's perfect chill out background fodder. If you're building out an initial collection, it's an oddball choice for £10 that could just suck up more of your time than anything else in this list. Finally, I'm spending £12 on this. It's not an exclusive. The Game Boy and Game Gear versions are the same game. It's not a standout classic. I once described it as the most 7 out of 10 game of all time. There is nothing here that's the best ever. But Crash Dummies is still an immensely charming and very 8-bit console experience. Based around the classic toy line which was derived from government seatbelt advertising, 
The game presents as a series of five repeating mini-games as your player dummy does various jobs in order to earn money to go on holiday. This is the thing with Crash Dummies. It's a laugh. It's fun. And while nothing it's doing is ever going to wow you, the path from skydiving to test driving to skiing to manufacturing new crash test dummies to piloting a missile around is a quick fire burst of gaming mechanics, all of which are easy enough to pick up and never outstay their welcome. You'll technically see everything the game has to show you in 10 minutes, but it's one of those things you'll pop back for another 10 minutes of pretty often. At £12, it's the priciest thing I'm going to have you purchase, but that's a small price for years of being glad it's there on your shelf. So that's 11 games for your £98, and maybe less if any of these games are in your local stores. You've got three arcade ports, multiple classic Sega games, a movie license, platformers, driving, puzzle, sports, shooting, and a collection of mini-games. And if you're here as an alternative to the NES, only Marble Madness and Lion King appear on that system, and both are better here.